Hey everyone, welcome to M2F Story. Today I am going to share with you My Son Become Girl by Accident Part 2, written by Elaine. So if you are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. And check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash M2F Story. We returned back to the ward about 2.30 p.m. to find Laura and her face swathed in bandages. There was two small openings for her eyes, and even her mouth was covered up. She would get her sustenance by a tube feeding through her mouth for a few days, and by drip into her right arm. By her bed, she still had the urine bag that no longer contained the blood redness of earlier in the day. We would spend the next few days with her, helping her adjust to this terrible ordeal as best we could. The healing starts. Three days following the facial surgery, Laura was beginning to perk up again, and it helped when both sets of surgeons arrived to remove and replace her dressings. The plastic surgeon was well pleased with his results. When he had removed the miles of bandages that surrounded her head, it was soon obvious that the results of the accident would leave only very minor scarring. His handiwork had changed her appearance significantly. Looking past the swelling was difficult, but it was possible to see her new pouty lips, her more tapered eyebrows and eyes, and that her pointed nose and chin was gone. Laura asked for mirror, but it was refused on the grounds that she would be too distressed if she saw the bruising. Again, it seemed that miles and miles of bandages came out of that small orifice, and she pronounced herself happy with the healing process and the lack of infection. We can also take the catheter out now, Laura. It looks like you are going to be a very pretty and healthy girl very soon. The doctor and got up and left the nurse to tidy up, and Laura now wide awake asked her first question to Amanda. Mom, am I really a girl now? Why do you ask? Amanda fired back. Oh, it's just that I could have sworn that I was a boy. Now that your bandages have come off, dear, it is easy to see that you really are a girl. Maybe the accident has rearranged your brain? She said laughing. Soon we were all laughing at Laura, who also saw the funny side. Mom, if I'm a girl, why did I dream last night that I kissed Lorraine at school? Did you? That's odd, she said. Maybe it's because you thanked her for something. Girls always thank other girls by kissing them. No, Mom, this was a hard kiss on the lips, and I dreamt that my willy got hard while I was doing it. Laura, I think the pretense is over now, said Amanda. How do you mean? The little boy girl answered. You are Laura now, and I'm afraid you always will be a girl from now on. When you were in the accident, you damaged your pee, -pee so much that the doctors have had to remove it. They have turned you into Laura, our new daughter, instead of Lawrence, our tearaway son. Laura looked on incredulously as Amanda explained why and what the doctors had done. So I'm a girl now? But I don't want to be a girl. I want to go back to being a boy. I'm sorry, Laura, but that isn't possible anymore, sweetheart. You will have to grow up to be a woman to match your new body. The doctors have decided to give you special medicine and that will help you adjust to your new life. Will I have to wear dresses and girls' clothes all the time? She asked suddenly, wide-eyed. Not if you don't want to, but it will look strange if you go around in jeans and a t-shirt all the time. Will I have to wear a bra? Laura suddenly asked. Yes, dear, as you grow older, you will grow breasts and you will need to wear bras to support them just like I do. Mom, your breasts are so large, will mine be as big as yours? She asked. I shouldn't think so, dear, but they will go to whatever size nature intends. Mom, I don't want to grow breasts, wear girls' clothes, and become a woman. Laura started crying in an uncontrollable fashion. As we tried to comfort her, the doctor hearing the commotion came over. What seems to be the problem? She asked, and I explained what had just happened, and that despite a promising start, Laura was not going to accept this transition without a fight. That's a pity, but forced gender changes can be difficult. You will need to be patient and just show Laura the advantages of her new sex. Some professional psychiatric help and counseling will help you. I hope so, doctor, I said as she left to go back to her theater list. Laura just lay there, just sobbing her pretty eyes out. Mom, I need to go to the toilet now, said Laura. Okay, I'll ring for a bedpan. No, mom, I want to do it in a real toilet, she replied. The nurse brought a wheelchair commode over, and soon Laura was wheeled into a large cubicle at the end of the ward. She was back in bed with a smile on her face. Dad, it's the weirdest thing I wanted to put my hands down to hold it, but there is nothing there. And my pee just went everywhere. I'm sure that it went everywhere except in the bowl. Amanda then took her hairbrush and started to brush Laura's hair out and fashion it in a more female style. 
before we went home for the night. Soon she had tied it into a pretty ponytail, and despite not having been cleaned for a few days, her hair shone. Thanks, Mum, that feels better, she said, patting her head with the only hand that did not contain an IV tube. Mum, when can I go home? I don't know, darling, that just depends on how quickly you get better. I'm going to get better very quickly, you wait and see. The long haul to womanhood begins. Laura was good as her word within two weeks she was ready to leave hospital, despite still being in some pain from her pinned leg and the surgery in her genital area. The poor child had endured a whole series of medications, blood tests, and hormone injections to start her therapy. In that time, Laura had begun to accept her new role, especially when she was shown by her nurse. Mom, it was very painful the first time Sheila did it, but now it's not so bad. She gave me a set of the dilators, and I have to do it five times a day. Watch. And Laura promptly displayed her prowess with the dilators over the next 20 minutes, and Amanda watched on incredulously at Laura's new smoother sexual appearance. Soon Amanda was helping her into that pretty sundress, panties, ankle socks, and smart girl's sandals. Mum, do I have to wear this stuff? Asked Laura just as Amanda finished dressing. I'm afraid so, dear. Your stomach wound is still oozing slightly and the doctors have said that tight jeans or trousers are out for the time being. And the only dress you have here is this pretty sundress, she said as she slipped the dress over the new girl's head. Here, give these chocolates to the nurses as a thank you. Oh, Mom, do I have too? Yes, darling, they have looked after you for the last three weeks. And I think that a box of chocolates is the very least we can do to show our appreciation. I watched with some pride as my new little girl thanked the nurses who had helped her. We will see you in a few weeks when you come for your checkup, said one and the others crowded round Laura's wheelchair. Soon we were speeding home and I carried Laura up to her bedroom. She was disappointed to see that virtually all of her male toys were gone, and in their place was a series of girls' toys, such as a doll's house. And her racing car wallpaper had been redecorated with the poem taken from a children's nursery rhyme. Over the last two weeks, an Amanda had styled Laura's hair into a more feminine style and allowed her nails to grow out. She also wore night dresses all the time. After I set her down on her bed and started to help her undress, she exclaimed, Dad, my skin feels funny. How do you mean funny? I asked. It feels softer somehow, she declared, pointing to her chest area. There's nothing to worry about. It's probably the first sign that your breasts are beginning to grow. I tried to say it in a matter-of-fact style, but it came over all wrong with Laura reacting violently. Dad, I don't want to grow breasts. I just want to stay as I am. She started crying again, but in a boyish fashion and beating me with her fists as I moved away. Look, Laura, your body and your mind will adjust to the changes that will happen to you over the next few years. The change to a girl was the only option open to you. I lied, but life as a eunuch seemed horribly wrong. Right now I do. I just wish I was dead. How can I be a convincing girl when I've spent all my life as a boy? She sobbed. That's all in hand. We have engaged a teacher to help with your schooling and female deportment. She knows all about you, and she has agreed to help with your transition before you attend your new school in two months' time. What new school? She asked in between sobs. Your mother and I have decided to send you to a private girls' school, and you will have to be convincing in your movements and attitude if you do not want to be rumbled by the other girls, I said. Dad, I don't want to be a girl, and I don't want to go to a girls' school. I'm sorry, Laura, but that's not possible anymore. I left the youngster sobbing her eyes out as I went downstairs to help her mother prepare supper. This was going to be harder than I thought. Each time Laura seemed to be against what had happened, it seemed impossible to make her see that the option that was taken was the only one available. Deep, deep down, she was still a boy. Then again, I hadn't exactly been tactful with the truth. This was never going to be easy. Amanda gave up on the cooking and waded in with both barrels when she went upstairs. What is going on here, Laura? She shouted. Even I winced when I heard her let go at Laura. I want you to stop these tantrums and accept the fact of who and what you are. You are a little girl now, like it or not. The sooner you face that fact and that you will grow into a woman, the better it will be for you. Laura sobbed as Amanda continued in a softer tone. Laura, it will not be so bad. You will be able to do all of the things that you did before and you will also be able to do girls' things too. 
Remember when you turned your nose up at riding a pony because it was something that boys didn't do? Well, you can have one of your own now. Girls can have even more fun than boys, you will see. Tears still streaming down her face, Laura said, Will you help me, Mom? I don't think I can face this on my own. Yes, dear. Your daddy and I will help you as much as we can. A new lady will be arriving later this month who will help you make the necessary changes. Come on, let's get you cleaned up and we'll go out shopping tonight for some new clothes for you. Laura was pretty proficient on her crutches and soon negotiated the stairs to sit down on the toilet bowl. Soon, our new daughter was ready to leave, her crutches pinned under her arms. Her long hair was brushed by Amanda into a ponytail, held with a pink hairband, and she added a little blusher to her cheeks. Soon, we were at the shopping center, and we bought three pairs of girls' slacks, two pair of jeans, three skirts, two dresses, some blouses, tights, and knee-high stockings. Plus, there were more cotton panties, training bras, and two pairs of T-strap shoes for school, plus a pair of wooden sole sandals with a one heel. On the way back to the car, we passed a jeweler store and Amanda dragged Laura inside and told me to go with the purchases back to the car. When they emerged, I had loaded up the stuff into the boot, but Laura sported two new gold sleeper studs. She was crying. She was adamant that she didn't want them, but it was no use, her mother had other ideas. Pretty soon we were home and she went back up to her room to lie down. Over the next few days, Amanda continued on her feminization program. She quickly booked a trip to the hairdressing salon, and Laura now sported a very feminine hairstyle of curly hair that framed her face in waves. Soon, it was time for Laura to go back to hospital, and we went back hoping to hear good news. There were the usual x-rays of Laura's leg fracture, and they showed that her leg was now fully weight-bearing. The doctor who performed the SRS pronounced the operation a great success. The plastic surgeon was less happy and declared that a further small operation on her hairline would be needed. Laura was given a booster injection of hormones and was then free to walk out on crutches. We went to see a movie on the way home, but it wasn't the adventure yarn that Laura wanted to see. Amanda dragged us into a romantic comedy. Advice and help. Wearing clothes, removing her private parts, and injecting female hormones would not be enough, though, to prepare Laura for life as a female. Laura would need a special feminization program that would produce all the required new mannerisms, life interests, expressions, and different reactions to outside stimuli. In short, Laura must act and talk just like a girl in all areas. It was soon apparent that we would need to pay a visit to the psychiatrist I met just after the accident. A week after Laura's first outpatient hospital appointment, I had arranged a meeting with Amanda and the psychiatrist. The doctor seemed overly enthusiastic about helping us achieve our objective. She is certainly physically convincing, she explained. There are however little touches that give her away. The way she speaks, the way she moves, and there is a lack of feminine role-playing. How do we go about fixing that, I asked? We have to start by observing all of Laura's masculine traits and find ways to eliminate or reduce them. For example, if Laura wants to play with boys in tough games, then that must be punished, and female games with other girls should be rewarded and encouraged. It won't happen in two weeks and could well last for the next two years or more before we are truly satisfied. Your wife will have to play an important role, and also her school teacher must be aware of the problems. We want to encourage the swishy walking, the feminine arm and hand movements and feminine voice inflection, and discourage all her male traits. The treatment I propose will be hard work, but it should correct the gender identity problems and relieve the associated emotional adjustment problems. We would expect the major portion of the treatment of Laura to take place both at home and at school. However, I would also expect Laura to visit here, when we will have one of my female assistants interact with her to check on her progress. While Laura thinks that she is waiting to go in to see me, she will be asked to stay with the assistant for up to 20 minutes or so and each visit will be spaced two weeks apart. During the first sessions, my assistant will talk, but the conversation will be limited to non-leading direct answers to any of Laura's questions. My assistant will refrain from initiating any conversation, but will attend positively to all of Laura's talk irrespective of gender references. During all the remaining sessions, my assistant will not respond to Laura's questions regarding masculine topics, but will give short, non-leading, direct answers, expressing positive interest in any feminine or neutral topics. Whenever Laura asks any questions relating to a masculine topic, 
the assistant will sound disinterested by saying, I'm not interested, or I'm not going to talk about that, or my assistant will withdraw her attention by looking away or reading a book or newspaper. We can record her conversations during these sessions to see whether there has been any improvement in the female component of Laura's speech. We should see whether she reacts positively over a long period. It will be in the home that the biggest change must occur. Amanda, you will be asked to reinforce her behavior by the use of a reward system for feminine behavior. This could include sweets, TV access time, activities, and outings. For each act of feminine behavior, you can give a pink token, and these can be exchanged for some reward according to a price list you can set. Say five tokens for a packet of sweets. I suggest that pink tokens are awarded for any feminine behavior or play with friends and relatives, while you must also issue blue tokens for certain male gestures or body language. Like what, doctor? asked Amanda. Say not keeping her legs or ankles together or crossed while sitting even when wearing slacks. After a period of several weeks without this gesture, then you could move on to deal with other problem areas such as masculine speech content and low voice inflection while maintaining the first behavior trait. Laura will need to interact with other girls regularly. Does she have any girlfriends or relatives of the same age? Yes, the neighbors have two young girls and she has a couple of cousins who live nearby. I responded. I suggest that you invite them round to play with Laura regularly, she said. The play period needn't be too long, but it should help Laura relate to the girl side of things. The feminization process must consist of suppressing her masculine behavior while building up and reinforcing the feminine. At school, we will need the help of her teacher. I propose that at the beginning of each day, Laura will be awarded 10 points, and during the day, the teacher will have the right to deduct a point for any disturbance, rudeness, teasing, or bullying of the other girls in the class or in the playground. After each incident, Laura will be told that she has lost a point for the bad behavior, and each point will equate to a loss of two minutes free time at breaks. After the bad behavior has stopped, the penalties can be extended to include masculine gesture mannerisms. Laura would also lose one point for each masculine gesture or trait, in addition to the bad behavior. I will praise Laura for overcoming these mannerisms at home and express confidence that she could similarly overcome them at school. How will you know that your methods are working? I asked. That's it for today. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you do, then be sure to subscribe for the next part of this story and show your support on Patreon.